Hey people, welcome back to the channel. So I hope you guys are doing well. So in today's session, we are going to discuss top 10 most asked HTML interview questions and answers in details. Okay, we will be focusing more on uh, understanding all these things practically so that uh, you won't have to remember all this stuff uh, by heart. So if you guys learn something and enjoy this kind of content, then please do subscribe my channel. It is going to motivate me to create uh, more such content. So let's go into the first question. So it says explain the key difference between local storage and session storage objects in HTML. Okay, so let's first understand the difference. Okay, so local storage object stores the data without an expiry date. Okay, but when it comes to session storage, uh, it stores the data for only one session. Okay, for local storage data will not be deleted when the browser window is closed. All these things we are going to see practically now. So stay tuned. In case of session storage, the data gets deleted if the browser window is closed. Okay. The third difference is the data in the local storage can be shared between multiple windows of the browser, but that's not the case with the session storage. Okay. It is only accessible to the current window of the browser. Let's see it practically. Okay. So guys, let's check the application of local storage first. So we have created an counter variable with the help of local storage. So when I click on it, the count is increasing when I refresh the browser the count is still increasing when I close the browser and try to reopen it okay the count will not be reset it to one if you see the count is still there at 29 and when you click again the count is going to be increased let's check out for session storage so we are going to replace the local storage with session storage and we'll try to see what is happening with the session storage okay so what we have discussed uh, that session storage will not store the value if the browser is getting closed so we'll see that so as of now it is fine when you refresh it the value is not resetting it because we are still in the browser but when you close the browser let's close the browser let's try to reopen the browser if you see the value will be reset so the value has been reset to one so it's not the case uh, that used to happen with the local storage question number two says what is data list tag in html okay so the data list tags provide autocomplete feature in html it enables users to add autocomplete form based on the predefined option let's see that practically so guys what we have done here is we have created a list with all these cars option okay? So if you see at the right side, when I press H, it is showing Honda and Hyundai. When I press M, it is showing Maruti and BMW because M is there. And when you press B, it is showing BMW. When you press H, Honda, Hyundai. When you press Y, it is Hyundai only. Okay. So this is what the main application of data list tag inside HTML. So the third question is, what is the use of figure tag in uh, HTML5? Okay. So the figure tag has two elements, image SRC and fig caption. Okay. Image SRC is used for adding image source in the document while fig caption sets the caption of an image. Let's see it uh, practically how we can do that. So inside body, I am including one figure tag. Okay. And inside that we are using image SRC is equal to. So this is the JPG file there inside uh, one of the folder. Okay. So I have imported this into the project and I'm using it. Okay. And fig caption here, I'm setting the caption that is my profile image. So if you see the result. This is the image and this is the caption. So that is what the main use of uh, figure tag. Let's move to the question number four. So it says how many types of CSS can be included in HTML. Okay. So let's go deep and try to understand it. Okay. So the first way is inline CSS. So inline CSS can be included inside body. Okay. So let's say you are writing some HTML file. Okay. So inside that you will have a body and inside body you have different different tags. So here uh, the example which I discussed in the previous uh, question. So here what I have done is I have included the CSS style is equal to background color and that is violet. So if you see the background color has been changed to violet. Okay. The second way to add the CSS is internal or embedded CSS. Okay. So inside HTML page, you will be having one head and then you will having one body. Okay. So you, you can do that uh, using a style tag and that you can place inside head. Okay. So here what I'm done is uh, I have simply added the CSS to the body by using the background color as aqua and then color is black, which means our caption is going to turn to black color. Okay. So that is what it happened here. So the color has turned to the aqua, the background color and the caption has been turned to black color. Okay. 
the third way to do is external css okay so for that what we have done is we have created one css class inside the project that name is demo.css okay and here i am using background color as aqua and color as black the same thing we have moved to a class and then inside head we are using link okay and there rel is equal to a style set type is equal to text slash css and href is going to be your class name the class that you have created for css okay and once you do that the css class is going to apply the property to your html page okay so that is the three ways to add the css to the html page let's move to the next question it says what is the difference between meter and progress tag in html okay so the meter tag measures data within a specified range whereas progress tag just represent the task progress okay so if you see here we have the example the first one is normal progress bar so here we have uh, demonstrated three kind of progress bar so normal progress bar progress bar with max and value attributes and progress bar with css okay so css is simply we are setting the height and width okay nothing else and in normal meter we have done the same way so it's the normal meter meter tag with attributes okay so it's simply the uh, max and min okay and the current value which is handed so that is why it is showing in middle and the third one is meter tag with css so we are simply applying the property like width and height okay so question number six is what is the difference between div and a span tag okay so div is a block element a span is an inline element okay so in the body we have written three div and uh, we are writing welcome back people today we'll be watching HTML interview q a okay so all these three sentences have been written in a different line okay so that is what the main use case of the div but when it comes to the span we have written in the same way right but if you see all these three sentences came in a single line okay so let's move to the question number seven it says what is the canvas element in html5 okay so the canvas element serves as a container for drawing visuals and web pages it enables the rendering of bitmap pictures and 2d shapes in a dynamic and uh, scriptable manner there are numerous ways to draw pathways boxes circle text and add images so simply what we have done is in the body tag we have written a canvas id is equal to my canvas and in the script so simply we are using the javascript okay so we have written where canvas is equal to document dot get element by id my canvas okay so simply we are getting this my canvas and then what we are doing is we are creating a 2d image okay and then fill a style is simply we are adding the color to it and fill rectangle is something that we are asking this to create a rectangular image okay so if you see it has created a rectangular image with this color okay so that is what the main use case of the canvas element so similar to this you can create multiple uh, images like uh, boxes circle text and you can add the image to it as well okay so let's move to the question number eight it says what are the html tags used to display the data in a tabular form okay so guys when we are having the requirement to display the data in a tabular form you definitely going to use all these tags okay so let's discuss it one by one so table tag is there for defining a table tr is there for defining a row in the table th is simply it defines a header cell in the table td is used to define a cell in the table caption is simply define the table caption col group okay this is column group okay it specifies a group of one or more columns in a table for formatting okay so, so when you want to format so many columns okay you can just use call group okay then col tag is used with call group element to specify column properties for each column okay t body this tag is used to group the body content in a table t head this is used to group the header content in the table t footer it is used to group the footer content in the table let's move to the question number nine it says what is the svg tag in html give one example okay so a scalable vector graphics in sort we call it svg is the abbreviation for the html svg okay modularized language called html svg is used to describe visuals in xml okay you can create and edit an svg image with text editor it is mostly used for vector type diagram like pie chart two dimensional graphs in an x y coordinate system okay so let's see by creating a circle okay so we are going to use svg tag with the width 100 and height is going to be 100 we are going to ask this to create a circular image by using the tag circle the x coordinate is going to be 50 the y coordinate is going to be 50 the radius is 40 
the stroke is white okay so this outer edge color is going to be white okay stroke width is going to be three so this border is having the width of three and the color is going to be red so if you write this see what we have made so we have made a circle with a stroke of three with color white and the circle color is going to be red okay and you can create uh, numerous other images or other diagrams using this okay it says what is the difference between display none and visibility hidden in html okay so when you set any html element property to visibility hidden okay it will it will be hidden from the web page but still it will occupy the space but that's not the case with uh, display none when you set your element property to display none the element will be hidden and it will not occupy any space on the website okay so that's all guys we have discussed all the questions so we will be coming with next part soon so milte next video till then bye bye take care